Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Digital Matt Donovan. I'm the digital representation of the real Matt Donovan, Chief Learning and Innovation Officer at GP Strategies. I'm so happy you've arrived at our AI Matters landing page. We hope to make this your primary source for all things AI as it relates to the workforce. We've got something fun and exciting for you today. As a showcase to how AI can be used as a time-saving tool, this entire presentation about how to define AI was created in a single afternoon by one human using various AI tools. You're listening to an AI synthesized version of Matt Donovan's voice, which was developed using an AI transcribed version of a recent webinar on this very topic. We ran the transcript through an AI editor to get rid of all of the ums and misspoken words by the mere mortal version of Matt. With that out of the way, let's get started. In this presentation, we'll explore three different ways AI is described, drawing from various sources for comparative information. Each vertical column in the model represents a different approach to describing AI. The first way of describing AI is as a reactive machine with categories such as limited memory, theory of mind, and self-aware. A reactive machine is an AI that reacts in the moment without any memory or prior information. Examples include recommendation engines, chess playing computers, and spam filters. These systems respond to the present situation without any historical context. Limited memory AI, such as self-driving cars, observes and monitors factors like the rate and speed of other vehicles, the physical environment, and past information. These systems use both historical data and present conditions to make decisions. Theory of mind AI, on the other hand, focuses on the awareness of emotions. Sophia, the first digital ambassador from the AI realm, is a prime example. She's appeared on talk shows and has been a keynote speaker at industry events. While it's debatable whether Sophia truly possesses a theory of mind, she's arguably the closest representation we have to date. The final category is self-aware AI, which refers to truly sentient systems. While the HAL 9000 from science fiction is a well-known example, such AI remains in the realm of future possibilities. One way to describe AI in this column is based on how it uses data from memory or its level of awareness. The second way of describing AI is by categorizing it in one of the following ways. The first is narrow AI, which we have now and we'll talk about more in a minute. The second category is general artificial intelligence, often referred to as general AI, AGI, or super AI. Narrow AI focuses on tackling specific tasks like digital voice assistants, chatbots, or autonomous vehicles, such as self-driving cars or delivery bots. These systems are highly specialized and are currently prevalent in various applications. General AI refers to systems that can reason and think like humans, while super AI describes systems that can solve problems better than humans in terms of thinking and reasoning. Both general AI and super AI are considered future possibilities and it's uncertain if we'll ever achieve them. Another way of describing AI is the way it's trained and how it acquires data. There are various methods including rules-based systems, often called expert systems, which are commonly used in the legal and medical fields. These systems process predetermined rules to make decisions. Supervised learning involves training AI with examples and oversight, like teaching an image classifier to identify cats by providing correct and incorrect examples. Unsupervised learning, on the other hand, allows AI to identify patterns and relationships and input data independently. Reinforcement learning involves providing feedback to AI systems as they make decisions, enabling them to learn from their actions. Deep learning and generative models use deep neural networks and large language models to create advanced systems such as ChatGPT. Understanding how AI developers describe and discuss their work is crucial when evaluating and interacting with AI systems. This includes being aware of the data sets used, the training methods employed, the tasks the AI is designed for, and the extent to which it simulates or exceeds human behavior. Although a deep interest in AI isn't necessary for everyone, being knowledgeable about these aspects is extremely beneficial when engaging with AI and thinking about its future in the workplace. Thanks everybody. And just a quick reminder to hit the subscribe button on this page and you'll be alerted via email whenever we add some fresh content, which we intend to do on pretty much a weekly basis. Digital Matt out.